Hey everyone, Harry here to talk about Justice and Gorin's absolute shellacking of Donald Trump and his sons in the opinion in the fraud case brought by the Attorney General of New York. We were waiting for it. We It seemed a foregone conclusion. Everyone was predicting a killer um, judgment. Yours truly uh, predicted that he'd come in just a bit under what Attorney General James was uh, asking for, you know, because he'd be looking to appeal, um, you know, time to pat myself on the back because that's what he did. But um, he did much more. So what you're hearing mainly in the headlines and the analysis is all the money. And it's a lot of money. It's uh, $355 million. James had asked for three hundred seventy, And as people are pointing out, it's actually a fair bit more than that because there's prejudgment interest involved in um, certain claims having to do with cer certain of the transactions he's, that they've been found to have been fraudulent. And that's 9% under New York law. So when all is said and done, he's looking at over $400 million that he'll have to post a bond for. That, remember, is in addition to the 83.3 that he'll need to post to appeal the E. Jean Carroll defamation verdict, including punitive damages. So um, even Trump's own likely inflated estimate had his cash on hand in the $400 million range. So it seems pretty likely that if he's going to be able to appeal, he's going to have to, you know, liquidate some properties and make the kind of slightly desperate deal that a criminal defendant has to do in order to get um, bail. But that just comes to the second part of the uh, opinion from Angoran. And there, there are two aspects I think that are, at least so far, have been underappreciated as I've seen the, um, the coverage. The one I have in mind is control. He already, remember, was under the a certain oversight by retired judge from the Southern District of New York, Barbara Jones, very highly respected, even though he's been trashing her um, as is his want. A little bit more on that later. But remember, all these assets are were already, and now they even more so, are really not his. They're putatively the assets of the people of New York. And uh, so there, he's under now a lot of restrictions. He can't try to do a fire sale with them or, or trade them around uh, for spite or whatever. Uh, indeed, um, before he had Barbara Jones doing occasional monitoring and asking for books, and she had already reported to the court, we had seen it, that things are a mess in Trump world and they remain a mess and they don't really have a system and a structure. But now there's an independent compliance monitor. And basically, you know, the guy cannot write a check without getting permission. So what a come down for the king of the universe, uh, Donald Trump, who all his life has, you know, done whatever the hell he wanted, usually breaking the rules uh, and gotten away with it. You know, it's like, pretty please, can I get this TV uh, to add to my 15 or whatever? Pretty please, can uh, I go on a trip? Pretty Because he is dispensing the assets uh, that really belong to the people of New York, at least if he does things extravagantly. So this is a kind of straitjacket control that is absolutely the opposite of what the, you know, complete Trump MO has been of, you know, doing whatever he wants. And then third, there's just such a hit to the brand, right? This is, you know, I, I shy away, as you know, from psychoanalyzing Donald Trump, but he gets this thing from his dad and he builds it up and the Trump brand and people want to go to his hotels. And I mean, man, he is a fraudster in New York. It's not going to be the case that people are going to brag or get T-shirts when they get to the Trump Hotel. He's just a mess and been um, laid low. And that's just the major part of it. But there's still you know, how, how much would you pay? Because 
he and Goran agreed with uh, the recommendation of the AG and has barred Trump from basically being an officer or director in any corporation. You know, Burger King, whatever scheme he wants. I, didn't, I think he did want to sell steaks, you know, anything for three years, any New York corporation. And uh, remember, he can't just take his New York money and incorporate something in Florida or whatever, because that is now basically stuck and subject to uh, uh, compliance. Uh, so uh, really deeply, deeply uh, handcuffed, straightjacketed, really, uh, about um, doing any other business. And this is as good time of, as any to mention. And the kids, uh, Don Jr. and Eric, they have a lesser version of the same thing, four million bucks they have to pay and two years where they can't be an officer in any New York corporation, you know, that they are really in that sense laid low. So, you know, uh, my summary here is a lot of money and his financial empire might be really jeopardized, but even more so terrible loss of control, a real sort of demo job on his whole brand. Um, one other point I want to mention about the law is you may remember that Angoran previously had um, sort of confiscated the certificates of corporation, the equivalent of corporate papers that, you know, you need in order to do anything. That really was the equivalent of the death penalty that had gone up on appeal and was just sort of resting there. Interestingly, Angoran uh, took it back today uh, and probably the better part of uh, valor because if you look at it, I'm no expert in New York securities law, but section 16, and 12 uh, suggests that maybe he had over um, extended his uh, powers there and that would have been bait for a reversal on appeal. Now, you know, I'm not sure where where Trump kind of goes. And then this one last aspect I wanted to uh, say, which is, in addition to all these factual findings, there's findings about credibility and personality. I mean, Angoran and, you know, absolutely deserved, given the way he conducted himself at trial and around trial, uh, the way he's conducting himself to this uh, day after getting the bad um, ruling trashing in Gorin. Uh, he said, you know, as tr Trump lacks credibility and also just his answers had this sort of stream of consciousness, non-responsive, you know, what we recognize of Donald Trump just going out there and, you know, beating his chest and, uh, you know, making kind of guttural, half comprehensible uh, uh, complaints. Maybe. Maybe it's, you know, that that, that just uh, gets the base all the more enamored. I'm not sure. But it, he got really clobbered in this opinion for his credibility by um, N. Gorin. And uh, how's this for a, um, a harsh uh, judgment? He's unfavorably compared to Bernie Madoff, who, you know, N. Gorin says, Madoff terrible, but at least when the gig was up. Uh, as it is now for Trump, Madoff, you know, was contrite, uh, completely humbled, uh, said, you know, how he had ruined people's lives and his own, et cetera. And by contrast, Trump, you know, remains in his one uh, speed Trump mobile of just like resistant, disrespectful, uh, you know, completely dishonest, et cetera. And that's something that hurts him too. And now has been called out by a judge in an opinion. So a very, very no good, horrible, bad day for Donald Trump. Talk to you later. Thanks for tuning in. If you enjoyed this video and other Talking Feds content, please take a second to like and subscribe. Talk to you later.